top 10 manga that are really good? I can't think of any more clickable titles. This is like my billionth top 10 manga video, so sorry. Considering that, how about we skip the preamble and just get into it? Rochikato Rakase has simply been one of my favorite manga finds in an incredibly long time. It's exactly my style, with its use of multiple art styles to create a surreal world that is equal parts goofy and legitimately intriguing and mysterious. The story kinda takes its time to build up, and many chapters are just little funny self-contained stories about the weird people and places the main characters Rojika and Raka encounter. However, there's always mystery building in the background that feels like it's heading towards something bigger as you you learn more and more little bits and pieces about the weird characters. There's some really cool lore to this world that gets surprisingly dark, and the mystery surrounding this definitely got me hooked to see this out till the end. While the offbeat humor of all the weird situations and people made even the most uneventful chapters a really fun read. So check this one out if you want to laugh, be slightly terrified, and see some incredible unorthodox art. Stardust Memories is a collection of short sci-fi stories that feel like they carry on the spirit of classic 60s and 70s sci-fi with its high concept oriented stories. The first thing that will catch people is the stunning artwork, not only capturing the bafflingly complex intricacies of the sci-fi machinery, but also doing a great job depicting scenes that are more ethereal and trippy to capture some of the more out there thematic explorations that some of these stories go into. You really do go to a lot of different places with this collection. You've got a story about a new type of people who are genetically engineered to be suited for space travel. Surprisingly, this concept is just used for a very reserved story about how these people can hear the stars and be like one with space. I feel like most other sci-fi writers would have taken this in the direction of being a thriller or something, but this just ends up being the story of the poetic existence of one of these beings. And not to say that there aren't thrillers or action, because there is plenty here, like the story about this planet that had an evolutionary explosion when a spaceship crashed there and the weird life on the planet used the genetic information from the astronauts to create these terrifying beings. Just like the other story, this doesn't go where you expect either though. The characters exploring this planet don't take on an overly hostile approach, and so instead of becoming like a predator knockoff or something, it ends up going in a totally different direction and exploring themes of the ethics and meanings of a cloned life. Yeah, I won't spoil anything more about these stories, but most of them are really refreshing takes like this, with unexpected plot directions and surprisingly impactful drama for characters you spend such small amounts of time with. So check this one out if you want a manga take on classic sci-fi or you just love looking at art of space. Would it really be a yappy top 10 manga list if I didn't have a Taiyo Matsumoto manga on there? So you just know I had to recommend this pretty recent release from the main man himself called Tokyo Higoro. This one is the story of a manga editor entering their 50s who's reflecting on life and what manga means to them at this point as they finally quit the job they've held for 30 years. This feels like a deeply personal story to Taiyo Matsumoto, as they even directly comment on their own work with the inclusion of things like characters discussing a manga called Number 11, which is clearly a reference to Matsumoto's previous manga, Number 5. It's quite a harsh reflection on themselves too, and it's kind of wild to see because I feel like Taiyo Matsumoto's manga is some of the most inspired and heartfelt stuff I've ever read, so it's intriguing to see their own perspective on everything. It kind of feels like the different characters are different sides of the author's own personality talking to each other where no one character encapsulates Matsumoto's exact views, but the back and forth is where the truth lies. I mean, the main character spends a good amount of time talking to their pet parrot, which I feel really drives home this metaphor of having an internal conversation. I feel like a lot of artists could relate to this kind of self-reflection, and it's definitely a direction and subject matter that felt fresh for a manga story. But don't get me wrong here, this isn't just a pessimistic story about self-critique, that's just part of the story and there's a lot of hope expressed too. The biting critiques each of the characters get thrown at them are not just points of negativity, but a turning point that sparks growth and change like the comments of a great editor would. This is a super interesting manga that was totally unexpected coming from Taiyo Matsumoto's other work, but it really got me reflecting and thinking in ways no other manga has. So please check this out if you want to see some incredible unorthodox art and you want to see a deeply resonant personal story that'll leave you pondering your own life. You don't like jazz? 
<laughs> then you'll like Blue Giant. It's about a guy named Dai who wants to play jazz saxophone and be one of the greats of the genre. It's pretty hard to make a music manga work in my opinion because you can't hear the music, but you won't find yourself thinking about that at all during Blue Giant because you'll be too immersed in its stunning art and compelling characters. Dai's determination is so captivating in their journey from playing sax alone by the river purely for themselves to eventually putting together a band is really touching. Blue Giant nails hitting the right beats of struggles, setbacks, and achievements to form an amazingly paced out journey of self-development and personal growth. So even if you're like Ken from B-Movie and you don't like jazz, this is still a really engaging story about striving to achieve something incredibly difficult in the joys of music, and the simple joys of life in general. So check this one out if you want to see some fantastically detailed art and an inspiring story of personal development. Is Samenai Machi no Kisaten a slice of life manga about making donuts? Or is it a surreal tale of a dreamlike reality that is meant to abstractly thematically represent the inner struggles of the main character trying to hold on to childlike wonder and maybe having trouble facing reality? Well, I guess it's both. Somehow this manga pulls off two totally different vibes at once and is legit a really good straightforward baking and cooking manga, while also perfectly building a slow burn about the mysterious world of Luteria where giant cats fly through the sky and witches exist. This world world has to be a dream, right? Well, give this manga a read to see for yourself because a lot of the fun is getting slowly sucked into the world and discovering the true meaning behind it along with the main character. So check this one out if you like stories with strange worlds that metaphorically reflect the themes of the story and want to see some really wholesome and beautiful depictions of the joys of baking. The first line the main character says in Yomi no Sugai is, that's a beautiful dragon's fart. So check this one out if you're a fan of- <laughs> Okay, no, okay. Let's get into what actually makes Yomi no Sugai so good. Well, first off, it's from the creator of Fullmetal Alchemist, Hiromu Arakawa, which is a manga that maybe a few people maybe consider being pretty okay. It's this little hidden gem, you know? No, but really, this is the most recent manga from one of the greatest of all time, so it has some big expectations placed upon it. And by the end of the first chapter, my jaw was on the floor. I don't want to spoil the plot twist here because it's so effective when you go in blind, but yeah. What I can tell you is that, as expected, the art is stunning, the world is incredibly well thought out, and the action is intense. So please, just give this a shot because it seems to me like a classic in the making. I mean, it's the author of Full Metal Alchemist doing another more action-oriented series. Just come on, you gotta check it out. Fantastic World reminds me of Adventure Time or Over the Garden Wall rather than any other manga I've ever read, and it's honestly pretty refreshing to see something this unique in the medium. Fantastic World is a story set in just that, a fantastical world which is full of equal amounts of bright, cheerful, energetic characters and dark mystery looming under the surface. It's the story of this kid who's lived in this weird forest, presumably their whole life, because trying to leave means being attacked by a massive monster. That is, until they meet a mysterious being that leaves behind an even more mysterious being that then sucks them up to use them to get an idea of what physical form to take and then they decide to become a tooth? Yeah, this, this story is weird as hell, but it's really entertaining and fun and has a fun and playful tone to its storytelling. So check this one out if you like manga with unique art styles and like the absurdist kind of storytelling and humor from stuff like Adventure Time. With a name like Vector Ball, how could it not be popular? <laughs> Obviously I'm joking, but man, that's an unappealing name. Sounds like a ripoff of like Blitzball from Final Fantasy X or something. Anyways, this manga comes to us from the creator of the popular series Zatch Bell, which I'm a fan of, and I was curious to see if the author had any other good manga. So yeah, I found Vector Ball, and it's actually pretty good, but in a little bit different way to Zatch Bell. It's still a shonen, but is even more comedy focused, with even more oddball humor that just gets me for the stupidest reasons. This dude's art style just cracks me up, and even when the gags make less than zero sense, I still find myself charmed by this weirdo manga. It's not just funny though, this series manages to have hard and 
fun action. One of the most fun parts of this action is that the main character's thing is that he's good at Rubik's Cube style puzzles, so he thinks of these really clever yet over the top and stupid ways of defeating the monsters they're up against. Like throwing a hundred desks and chairs at them onto all of their joints until they can no longer move. It manages to be really funny and legitimately an interesting approach to fighting the monsters. And okay, even though that is really entertaining, the framework of the story isn't really going to blow you away. It's mostly just thin excuses to have fights and character growth and to have certain mysterious elements get revealed over time. However, it's executed well, so it's a really good time regardless. So check this one out if you're a fan of Zatch Bell or you just want some dumb fun that manages to have a lot of heart. Surprisingly, Confession is not a manga adaptation of the song by Usher. Happy Easter, Xbox but instead one of the most tense thriller stories I've ever read. Basically, these two hikers are climbing a mountain together, and one of them gets injured to the point where if they don't get medical attention soon, they'll almost certainly die. In this bleak moment of isolation, the injured character, certain he's going to die, confesses that he's killed someone before and that they didn't want to die without getting that off their chest. Then suddenly, through the storm, they both see a cabin and they're able to take shelter there. But when they call for help, the rescue team says it'll take two days to reach them. So these two are alone for two days in that cabin, with emotions left to stew after the confession that just happened. Obviously, being trapped with someone who just confessed to murder makes the other guy a little uncomfortable, but this is just the beginning of the downward spiral. The one guy does not want to be exposed as a murderer if he's going to live, so a thick tension permeates every interaction the two have. Will he kill me to shut me up? Will he really turn me in? I won't spoil where the story exactly goes from here, just know that it's a really cleverly written story that'll keep you on the edge of your seed right up until the end. So check this one out if you like well-crafted thrillers that lean less towards horror and more towards exploring the dark depths of human behavior and relationships. Anoko no Ie is a surreal story that puts you in the perspective of the thought process of a kid, and the way it does this is super interesting to me. Because like, we all experienced a time in our life as kids where our thought process and views of the world were so abstract and almost trippy in a way. So to bring you back to the vague memories you have of that headspace, a story has to go to some weird yet intriguing places. I've recommended a story like this before with Ashizuri Suizuku-kun, but Anoko no Ie definitely stands out even from that. Anoko no Ie tries to bring you more into the emotional headspace of a kid with exaggerated imagery to represent the heightened emotions kids feel, like the comfort of a mother being represented by the fluffiest futon of all time. However, that futon grows so large that it becomes smothering. This dynamic is emblematic of where this story goes, because it tries to explore the conflicting feelings of a kid desiring independence and craving dependent comfort at the same time. The surreal journey the main character goes on when leaving this comfort to venture out into this strange world is pretty pretty open to interpretation and full of intriguing symbolism. It'll leave you feeling emotions you're not even sure why you're feeling with its deeply resonant themes, and it'll leave you mesmerized by its cute and beautiful yet deeply meaningful artwork. So check this one out if you want to get immersed in an abstract way of thinking that'll take you on an emotional journey that you won't soon forget. So there's 10 more great manga for you to check out. I hope you learned about something new that caught your eye and let me know what you thought of some of these in the comments. Also, let me know some manga I should check out cause I'm always looking for new series to read and I found so many good ones from the comments on my other top 10 videos. You all really are the best. Anyways, thanks so much for watching and supporting the channel and I'll see you next time when I actually think of a decent title for one of these.